Thank you very much. Um, my name is Carrie Owen, and I'm from Shubin Connections. And um, I'm going to talk to you about brand influence and how brands influence through integrity. And that's, um, that was our key question. So I'll start with uh, talking a little bit about brands and what brands are. And then we'll talk a little bit about integrity and how we thought about integrity. And then we'll kind of put the two concepts together and share a vivid perspective on how brands influence integrity. So, um, so what is a brand anyway? Um, we sort of think we know what brands are, and sometimes we think, well, brands are just stuff that we buy, or a logo, or something like that. And that's true, it is the stuff that we buy. Um, and they are represented by logos, and by visual form, and by colors. Um, but brands are also the connection that we have with things. Uh, how we see things, and, and they sort of store our memory and our judgments on the things that we buy. Brands can also be people, like the guys up there in the corner that are running for election this year. Um, and you also have a brand that, that you offer uh, to people. So brands are a, a lot of different things, but mostly they are a connection. Um, so brands simplify. It's a great thing that they do. They simplify purpose, and they store all kinds of judgments and evaluations that with that we've made about things, and they keep that in the back of our minds. Brands are also highly emotional. Um, and even if we say, well, I bought that brand because it was on sale, yes, but you bought that brand because of how it made you feel. You bought that brand because it made you feel like a smart shopper, or you were being uh, penny wise, or whatever. So um, brands, the connection that you have with them is, is always emotional. The other thing that's important to the, the talk today is that everything that has to do with the brand, whether it's product innovation or customer service or the ads that you see, it all comes from the brand and it all has to work together coherently to tell a story. So in marketing we think about the four P's and I don't know if any of you have taken a marketing degree or anything like that, but the four P's are often taught and they're pretty simple. The first one is about the product, so the thing that you're buying. The other one is about uh, place, where you would go to buy it, what retail store or whatever. Price, so that's how much you're going to charge for your item. And promotion, that's the promise or the, the what it, whatever your offer is about why you should buy that thing. And the four P's are important because, again, you have to tell that coherent story about what the brand is all about. So you're not going to find luxury goods, you're not going to find Prada at Walmart. You think to yourself, oh, that's not going to happen, right? Um, you're not going to find cars at the running room, because the running room sells running shoes and outerwear, and walking items, and that sort of thing. You're not going to find uh, grapes on at 99 cents a pound of Pusateries, because that's not how they roll. They might sell you exotic grapes, colorful grapes, special grapes, but they will never be 99 cents. That might be $5.99, but never $0.99. Cents. Um, and it's important. I can't really get sushi or asabuco or risotto or anything special or exotic, potentially, at Tim Hortons because that's, that's not what they sell. That's not what they offer. Okay? What was our last one? That one's about visual identity. So RBC would never be in red. You can't see that that's red, but it, what it is. Um, and so RBC is blue. They have that blue, very strong blue color with yellow. Uh, it's meant to be the, the crest of the lion and so on. So you would never see anything from RBC in red. So you can kind of see that the brand stories are put together with all those four Ps. And they have to behave like that in order to be coherent and to maintain their integrity. So, so what? So you basically have to tell a brand story, or as we call it at Vivid, a brand being, that is as coherent intellectually as it is motivating and doable and actionable. So the say, what a brand talks about and says that it is, really has to match the do, what it does, how it behaves, the offers that it gives you, how the customer service phone call goes when you've had a bad day. So those things have to integrate, and that's what integrity is. So that's what integrity is, and we did a lovely little word, you'll love it. Integrity is a very big word, quite literally a very big word. But um, well, what does it mean? And we wanted to kind of unpack that and sort of say, there's a lot of things in there in that word integrity. So how can it, how can it really work and how does it apply to brands? So we've got a vivid perspective for you. 
The first one is don't just say it, show it. Okay. Second one is have a point of view and a really strong, consistent point of view, I would say. Um, keep your promises and strive to do better. And the last one is respect your consumer. Let me talk to you a little bit about those. So we talked a bit about this, don't just say it, show it. So if a brand says to you, I have integrity, you sort of go, well, how do I know that? I need to, I need to see proof. I need to understand, I need to see you demonstrate that integrity. So just because brands say that they have integrity doesn't necessarily mean that they do. So don't just say it, show it. My next one, um, which means that they have to have a point of view. They have to come with you, to you, with something that they believe in. And it has to be a clear, ownable, and consistent point of view. It has to be something for which I know what that brand stands for, okay? Because if I don't know what that brand stands for, how do I know that they're behaving with integrity? How do I know that they're acting with integrity if I don't really know what they stand for, okay? So let me give you some examples here. You know these guys in the corner from um, TD Bank? So the old guys that chat away and they talk. Because <laughs> so TD Bank, they want you to know that banking is comfortable. They want you to feel that banking with us, unlike other banks, will be a comfortable experience, not an overwhelming one. They've got that green chair that they use a lot in their advertising or in their promotional activities to signify, again, that banking is comfortable. If we think about WestJet, um, that flying experience, what they're trying to say to us is flying with WestJet is different. It's better because we're owners and because we care. Because we're owners, that means that we go that extra mile and we care more than, say, Air Canada. Um, and so that's their point of differentiation, and that's their point of view that they're offering you. If we think about one of our clients in the middle, Molson Canadian, if we think about what they've put out there into the market about made from Canada, what they're saying is um, this beer is made from Canada. So there's prairie barley and fresh, clean, crisp taste of Canadian water, and that is actually a point of difference in what they're offering. So their point of view is about made from Canada. Now, what's really important is that they behave that way, that they actually do things in the marketplace that reinforce that point of view. So let me show you something that I think does that. This land, it runs right through us. It makes us and it shapes us. It gives us places you can't get to with a car and lakes you will find on any map. For everything this land gives us, it's time to give something back. The Molson Canadian Red Leaf Project. 100,000 trees, 20 events, one awesome land, maybe even better. Join us at redleafproject.ca. Great. So it makes sense that things that they are going to do in the community would be about making from Canada, would be about preserving the land, about being, putting resources and effort into making from Canada. The next one is about keeping your promises, and if you know about Howard Schultz, he came back into Starbucks and said, hey guys, in the last 10 years, you've really watered down the Starbucks experience. Starbucks is about to, supposed to be about coffee. Starbucks is meant to be about a coffee experience. And he came in and wrote an email, quite a lengthy one, that said, you know what, you're watering it down by not having real baristas, by these people that are pushing buttons, pushing buttons rather than making the coffee. You're watering it down by changing the ambiance and the store layout, um, and by not offering the same soul and environment that he expected from a coffee experience. So what did he do? Well, he actually put a sign on the door of 7100 Starbucks locations in the US and said, we're closed today because we're going to learn about our craft. We're actually going to spend some time and relearn how to make coffee. So that makes complete sense if your point of view about, is about being a coffee is about offering coffee. Now, we could debate whether, well, they offer sandwiches, now uh, they've got all kinds of merchandise. Starbucks is more than just a coffee company. It's a place that I go. It's where I meet moms for coffee. It's not just about the coffee anymore. And that's a, that's a debate that they have to have at Starbucks. But what we liked about this was that he was trying to keep his promise about being a coffee company, and he was striving to do better by reteaching people how to make coffee. So the next one, uh, is respect your consumer. And uh, what do telcos, banks, and airlines all have in common? Well, sometimes you feel like this guy over here. 
you feel a little overwhelmed, you feel somewhat frustrated, and you may feel that you're being taken advantage of because of loyalty programs that have gone awry or because some promise was not kept. And how many of us have spent time trying to understand which mobile bundle, which cable package, what, what deal am I getting, and do I need to have a degree in this stuff to make a decision about which company to go with? Well, that's sort of how they want you to feel. And, and our opinion here is that it's kind of disrespectful to the consumer to be kind of trying to hoodwink you into thinking, oh, this is the right way to go. So um, the, it's different when you walk into an Apple store. You know that the same thing costs the same every time you go in there. There isn't a difference. There's no special deal. What you could say is, well, they're overcharging you to begin with. Maybe, but I don't have to be in the position where I'm you know, negotiating with a, a young high school student at a future shop <laughs> for what I have to get done. So respecting consumer is, is really about you, the consumer, and how you understand um, what the offer is and what, is, what you think is, is the right decision for you. Um, McDonald's is, uh, has just recently talked to us about what they put in their burgers. They've got one side of the burger, which, which is for the photo shoot, the four-hour burger that's tape made to prepare. This side is the 30-second or the 60-second burger. And people were wondering, why does my burger look like that when you tell me my burger should look like that? So they've done this open kimono approach where they've said, this is how we make our burgers. And your questions uh, can be, we will answer your questions about the quality of our ingredients uh, and all the things that go into our burger. But this is all very serious. Uh, and integrity doesn't always have to be so serious. And so I leave you today with one final ad um, that just shares a little bit about how brands can act with integrity and influence you with integrity, but also, and really importantly, have a bit of fun. So.